Hi, my name is Audrey. I'm a graduate student at the University of Florida in the Fisheries and Aquatic Sciences Department. I also work at the Nature Coast Biological Station. Even though we're all working from home right now, our research hasn't stopped. So today I'm going to talk to you a bit about what I study, which is fish sounds. To start off, for those of you who may not be aware, yes, fish make sound. This does include splashing and chewing food like you might expect, but it also includes intentional sounds or calls used specifically for the purposes of communication. If it helps, you can compare these with different kinds of bird sounds. Birds make sounds while flapping their wings or eating a peanut, but they also intentionally communicate through song and fish are capable of this as well. And it makes evolutionary sense that they would. Underwater, fish may be able to hear things that are going on much further away than they could detect through sight and smell, so it would be beneficial for some species to learn to communicate with sound. Hundreds of species of fish use sound for behaviors like forming spawning aggregations or defending their territory. When fish are larvae, they can use sound to navigate to reefs where they can grow into adult fish. Even other animals like dolphins can listen to find fish for food. Because of the importance of fish sounds for so many behaviors for so many species, it's important for us as scientists to study them. We can do this through listening. I and other scientists are able to listen to and record fish sounds using an underwater microphone called a hydrophone. Here are two of my favorite fish calls I hear out by the station. This first is from the aptly named pigfish, which makes this sound primarily when it's upset. And the second is from the male gulf toadfish, which call to alert females where their nests are for spawning. I can then use computer software to visualize and analyze the fish sounds I hear. My main goal right now is to create a list of all the fish species in the world that we know make sound so far. Luckily, I don't have to go out and find them all on my own. I can use the work scientists have already been doing for decades. So I've been spending a lot of time on my computer looking through over 2,600 articles and books, but really it hasn't been too bad. I did learn how to say fish sounds in 11 different languages. And I found that there are a lot of fish that make sound. Out of the roughly 35,000 fish species thought to exist in the world, over 1,400 or one in 20 fish species make intentional sounds or calls. Furthermore, probably all fish species are capable of making sounds through activities like splashing and chewing. That's a lot of fish sounds. By creating a readily available list of fish species that have been studied for sound production already, I'm helping to summarize what has been done so far to make research on fish sounds in the future much easier. I hope to one day create a library of fish recordings like we already have for bird songs to further make research easier. Beyond my master list of fish sounds, I'm also studying the sounds of seagrass meadows, how attractive fish find noisy lures used for fishing, and the impacts of noise pollution from activities like shipping on fish behavior. So I hope this short video helped you learn a little something about fish sounds. If you're interested in finding out more about underwater sounds in general, I recommend visiting the website Discovery of Sound in the Sea. Thanks for listening.